Hey, check this place out. Fancy. Yes. Good afternoon. How may I assist you? Yeah, I was told by the Transmutation Magic Front Office that I could come here to see a guy named Professor Ferguson. Is that you? Yes, I am Professor Ferguson. And you are? Shaft. Hey, I only have a few minutes here. I gotta go back to the Learning Center and hook up with some fur, um, associates. But uh, what I need is somebody to help me out with the spell I've been working on, uh, uh, Flaming Arrows. It just doesn't seem to be working the way I think it should. Of course. But before I do, could you tell me what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party? Uh, yeah. That sounds like a fair trade. Teleported to the Knowledge Center, the party, minus Shakara, investigates the deserted and barred library. Reaching the anchor room on the fifth floor, they find it guarded by more of Tinnerman's mechanical creations, guard dogs. Believing Grimby Chum to be held behind the closed doors, Shaft and Drag attempt to climb a rope along the outside of the Knowledge Center. Failing to maintain his grip, Dreg falls from the rope, attracting the attention of a mechanical dragon that descends upon the party, blasting them with its breath weapon and charming many of them, forcing them to turn on each other. Well done, Shaft. It looks like you've mastered it. But I will caution you. You can only maintain focus on one such spell at a time. Casting another spell requiring your full attention will dispel the flaming arrows. What do you mean? That's not true. I you can concentrate on more than one thing. I, I do it all the time. <laughs> I assure you, you cannot. Masters of the Arcane have tried for millennia and have not attained the ability to cast two such spells at one time. What are you talking about? You mean these guys can't figure out how to think about two things at one time? I mean... What if you have a Jolvi song stuck in your head? You know, you're, 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 you're singing it and along and you're going, Ah, I sure would like to go get a nice alebender stout. I mean, you could keep both of those things in your head at one time. Well, that's not exactly the... Uh, I mean, surely it's not much of a leap to think that if I mark somebody for death with a spell, I can't also think that I can kill them with the flaming arrows. Well, Shaft, it doesn't work like that. You, you Wait, see, let me let me cut you off right there, Professor. I, uh, I obviously have offended you. I'm I'm sorry. I, as you know, I'm a novice at this stuff, and you know nobody told me I couldn't do it, so I just didn't know any better. But so far be it for me to argue about uh, how spells work, right? Um, but I do appreciate what you've done. I've got to get back to the adventure. The metal dogs. Nipping at Shaft's heels, still there, and still both attacking. Well, one is going to get a 16. I have a 16, but I'm going to use Defensive Duelist. Okay, so that uses your reaction. And the second one is a 22. I can't do anything here. Uh, only 7 piercing, and you can make a saving, a strength saving throw again as it tries to grab and grapple you with its mouth. 19, well, 25. Definitely way more uh, easily pulling away from its grasp. The dragon, now suddenly this looming opposing gorilla. It, it all, I mean, the window is obviously way too small for it. It's huge. Like, it's as large as you now are, Falzern, actually. It's 15 by 15. So, Falzern, you're like cramped into this story. I mean, there's plenty of working head height, uh, I suppose, as the stacks of books, they are quite tall. But you certainly do have to stoop a little bit in your gorilla form. But all the dragon can really do, it can't quite get its claws in to do much. Come at me, bro. I'm a giant ape. <laughs> so actually what it's going to do, it's it can't quite, you know, it doesn't have the room to maneuver to swipe at you, Falls. It's, it's like, basically, I mean, I, I guess you could rule that you had, would probably have something like three-quarter cover. But I'm going to say it just, it's too, it's not feasible. So actually what it does is you see the, its, its front claws kind of grab at the window sill, And it's actually just going to start attacking the side of the building. Trying to rip into it to make room for him. Oof. It just starts to pull the brick at the window apart. You see the, the wooden frame just easily splintering under its mechanical might. Shearing this, you know, like 
two and a half foot wide window right into more like a five uh, to seven foot gap as it's just pulling brick away, uh, trying to get in at you. That's kind of, that's really all it can do. Uh, last in initiative is Slava and still charmed to attack Mia. Mm-hmm. It's going to launch at you with a, with a trident. Uh, 22 to hit. Yeah. It's not going to do much. Um, oh, that's not that bad. 12 piercing with the trident. And he will also get, he gets to make the wisdom at the end of his turn as well. And he fails. Mia, back to the top. Okay, I'm up. I'm like, sorry, Shaft. And then I call lightning down on the dragon. 5d10, but it's not um, it's channeled. Eh. Well, it actually saves this time. No, it doesn't. 18. Fine. Finally. You know, it has advantage on magical effects, and I've been rolling terribly for your lightning. Ooh, every so 39, night. half of 39, so whatever that is. Okay. 20. That is math. 19. And yeah, you see like its neck, which is kind of really all you can see, right? Like some of its shoulders and, it, you know, it's grasping, scraping claws at the brick of the building. Yeah. And just its head just reels back as you hit strike it with your lightning. And then I am where exactly as far as movement? Like, could I get out of the way of the dragon? Well, yeah, you could. you can definitely get like out of direct line from the window for sure. You just kind of, you know, step even only five feet, ten feet to your left or right, but there's also two of the mechanical dogs on Shaft as well. Right. I will... How far away is Shaft? Remember, you moved right up to him to, as part of the charm, Sorry, so he's I'm, right in front you've of you. spoiled us with maps, and now I can't I know, use my I know, imagination. I, well, I had I had thought the fight was going to take place up in the anchor room, so... <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay, so I will step closer so they have an extra target instead of Shaft type thing. Okay, great. So you're kind of side by side with Shaft now against these dogs. And as much as possible out of the line of the dragon, but we'll see. Drag, still under the effects of the charm. Miss. All he is going to do... I mean, he'd love to fire by you, but he's really only trying to hurt you, not everybody. So in fact, what he's going to do is he's just going to magic missile you. And it hits. Now, I suppose, I suppose, eh, Charmed, he would do his best to do as much damage as possible to you. Therefore, you kill he would me, probably, I will kill you. He would probably cast this at the highest level he could, which currently is his single six-level slot. It's an auto hit, right? It is an automatic hit. Freaking yes. dead. You just killed our healer. Thank you. Well, it is only D4s. So I do believe, unless I've miscounted, that's six darts at six level. Is that right? I don't know, Bill. You have the spell, right? So for, it's a for, it's magic missile. It's the first level spell, three darts, right? One more D4 for every level, so plus five more darts. So eight darts. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Wow. You can't, like, one-shot me, but... You take 30 force damage as you are just hit from over and over and over eight piercing missiles into your armor. I'm in death save mode. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, at the end of Dreg's turn, he can make his wisdom saving throw, which he continues to fail. From the stairs, you hear heavy footfalls. Nothing has quite come into view yet, but there's clearly activity in the stairwell. Shaft. Okay, so I just saw Falzrin turn into an ape. I saw S- a Slava turn and hit Mia. Mm-hmm. Right? You went down. Mm-hmm. I got these dogs biting on me, mm-hmm. and there's a dragon head staring at me. Mm-hmm. Yes, so you you are still currently charmed but by, by the dragon, but the dragon actually did fail to give you a telepathic command to give you a target to attack. So you are free to attack... Who, other than the dragon, whatever you want. Okay, so uh, I still have my own wits about me. I just don't have a command. I will cast Zephyr Strike, which is also a concentration spell, so it'll break the hunter's mark that I have on Mia. Um, well, actually, yeah, Mia went down, so I can move hunter's mark if I wanted to. But um, I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike. So I move like the wind until the spell ends. Your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. I am going to run past the dogs, 
grab onto the railing of the steps and try to slide down as fast as I can. Before, But while I go past the dogs, I'm going to try to hit one of them. Uh, once before the spell ends, you can give yourself advantage on one weapon attack roll on your turn. The attack deals 1d8 extra force damage. Whether you hit or miss, your walking speed increases 30 feet till the end of that turn. So, first things first. I'm going to take my rapier and try to slap one of these dogs across the head. And that is a plus 8, 16. You have advantage, right? And I have advantage, yep. That's better. Uh, 19. That 19 is it. Okay, and the dogs have not been hit yet, right? No. They are perfect puppers. 23 points of damage to the dog. Oh, that is easily enough. You drive your rapier through this dog while you aim for the skull, down its mouth, whatever, into it, and it is enough to down one of these two canines. Okay, so then I run out the hallway as I'm diving for the, the railing to slide down to the next level. I'm going to look up. Do I see? What do I see? You see five toy soldiers in single file coming down the stairs. The light in their forehead is a steady red. And I'll, I'll do my full 25 plus 30 down the steps. Okay. And uh, when I end, I'll sort of stop there and turn around. Ape Zarin. All right. I'm going to target the dragon that's right beside me here. And I will use my multi-attack, the fist attack times two. So first is a 17. Hit. That's his AC, 17. And a 19. Okay, so both hits. Nice. Now, does it say your fists are considered to be magical? Doesn't say anything about magical. So first attack is... 27 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay, Jesus. For once. That was a good roll. This is not a good roll. Uh, 15 bludgeoning damage for the second one. Your first attack smashes into the base of this dragon's neck, denting in to the metallic scales, and puts this massive kink in it as your second fist finishes the job, decapitating this metallic dragon, its body out of the window just releases and falls four stories. And you hear this smash and shattering of metallic parts far down at the bottom of the knowledge center. Ape Zarin rears back and and beats his chest triumphantly. <laughs> what does it sound like? Letting out a growl. Uh, um, what does the growl sound like? Apes don't growl, do they? I- insert applicable ape noise. No, nope, I want to hear it. <laughs> Oh, there we, there we go. That's what I wanted you to do. <laughs> Just like that. Sorry for your eardrums. Perfect. <laughs> you have your movement still. Okay, so I have a 40-foot movement speed and a 40-foot climb speed. How far am I from the, uh, Save the me. stairs? Where... Oh, right, yes, Mia's still down. She is, yes. You could get over to her, but you've used your action for your attack, right? So there's not much you could do in that regard. Uh, she does have a metallic dog, one still up, yeah, uh, standing me. over her. Your full 40 movement will get you to the stairs. Okay. And you, of course, see Dragon Slava. Now that the dragon's gone, they're both kind of like giving their head a shake as the charm, of course. They're no longer charmed as its source has been decapitated. Okay. I'm going to rush over to Mia. Uh, with the intent of uh, protecting her and um, doing a medicine check on her in my next turn, potentially. Can you do that as an ape? Probably not. Yeah, I think oh, so, okay. yeah. You can kind of posit it out, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens on his next turn. The last remaining mechanical dog will, of course, charge at its closest target, which is the ape, Zarin, with a bite. That is uh, only an 11, so that's definitely gonna miss dragon dead slava coming to seeing he had something he contributed to downing mia downing the ally of thor and the ally of his ally he'll stand next to you shakara and you Uh, actually see he produces damn it thank you (laughs) sends next i just so used to shakara being down (laughs) (laughs) that's true (laughs) (laughs) 
He'll stand next to you, Mia, uh, producing a health potion, which he will f- feed you. You will get back six hit points. Not that great. It's just a, a shit healing, you know. It's it's just like a five-hour one energy shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all he will do. So and then right to the top is Mia. So, of course, Mia, your storm outside is, is dissipated as you've gone down. There's a dog. There's a dog, yeah. And an Pretty ape. much directly above you, yes. And a I giant look up and ape. see a bunch of giant eight balls. Um, <laughs> there's no, like, yes, no, maybe, ask again. But, you know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Did you give it a shake? <laughs> yeah. I'm not willing to try. Um, second, third level. I've got a second level spell slot and a third level spell slot. Ask again later. Ask again later. <laughs> that is the classic eight ball. Okay. I'm going to touch myself and cure my wounds. And I heal 17 hit points. Wow. What what level did you use uh, for that? I use the second level cure wounds. Okay. Wow. I mean, you could move. You are right next to the dog. Ooh. Half your movement to stand up. I jump into the ape's arms. I, sh- <laughs> I shake a ball on the way up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll back, I'll back up so that the dog is not gonna go for me. I don't know. Yeah. Well, if you back up, it'll get an attack of opportunity. That's all. <gasps> then I stay where I am. Okay, Dreg. Mia, my my apologies. I, I don't know what came over me. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't feel. He good. will uh, magic missile the dog just at the first level. 12 force damage to dog numero duo. And he'll he'll continue after Shaft, kind of skirting this metallic dog, just getting closer to the stairs. And he now, of course, sees uh, the, the metal men. We, we have more. We have company. There's more. The toy soldiers. I, I don't see Zalstoff. And he unfortunately walked right into them as they continued down the stairs, making it to the base, and you see them turn to survey this scene. Two of them move up to Dreg, and the three continue forward to uh, Mia, Slava, and Ape Zarin. Two attacks on Dreg from each. Both are going to hit. So he takes a total of 23 slashing. Jeez. From the first, just from the first uh, one. F- oh. Second Toy Soldier. Ooh, only one hit. Can we teleport again? No. Just nine more bludgeoning this time as this one wields, uh, like, like uh, attached to his arms, attached to his arms is, 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 a, is a mace. They assess Mia, Ape Zarin, and Slava and decide that the ape is the biggest threat as they encircle you, Falzern. Ooh, a critical fail and uh, a 26. 26 hits just barely. So you'll take, oh, only six slashing and the critical fail will swing into one of the other soldiers next to him. Ooh, taking 13 friendly fire. Four more attacks upon Falzrin. One more hit, two more hits. A total of 18 piercing damage from the last two toy soldiers. Shaft. You see now at the top of the stairs you've descended dragging two of these toy soldiers. Okay, so two of them, or three of them went in the room and two of them are still outside in the hall? That's right. (sighs) Man, this was not the plan at all. I wanted them to follow me. Okay, I'm going to pull out and give a couple nice pot shots up at the ones that I can see. 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay, and I assume those out there have not been hit yet, so I'll put that. That's going to be 10 points of piercing damage. And I'll shoot again. That's an 18 to hit. That one has been hit, so I'll do that plus that. So that's going to be 18 points of damage. And I'm going to yell to Mia... uh, No, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say, Come and get me, you little pieces of crap! Bing, bing! 
Okay, great. <laughs> Balzer. All right, so now that Mia is back up, he's going to attack um, the closest enemy. You got your choice between a toy soldier one through three and a dog. Which one's closest to Mia, or? I would say uh, there's a dog and one of the soldiers adjacent to Mia. Why don't we start with the dog? It's a nat 20 again. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. So 29 to hit. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to just roll that Crit first? It. Crit it up. Yes, just just give us the damage for our local statistician that likes to keep track of that, because you were definitely okay. killing this dog with this first fist. <laughs> so his his fist attack is 3d10 plus 6 bludgeoning damage. Okay, so that's 36 plus a roll of 3d10. So Remember what a d10 looks like. Oh, trust me, I'm not screwing this up. <laughs> uh, 15. So a total of 51... 51. Bludgeoning? Is it cleaving? <laughs> Your it's cleaving. giant ape fist just literally smashes this dog to bits as it disintegrates underneath your might. Epic. All right. Um, so I have one. How does multi attack work? You can target as many or as few as targets you have as long as they're within range of you. I could switch targets now. Absolutely, yeah. So I'll switch over to the uh, mechanical man. The toy soldier. Oh, that's not near as good. That is a 11. Ooh, that is unfortunately going to miss. I just needed another zero on the end of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good uh, good smash, though. Uh, finally is Slava, who will step up now next to Mia and just try to attack the same toy soldier you were this trident. Ooh, that is a hit. Fortunately, he doesn't he doesn't do all that much damage. Eight piercing. So you all are, are seeing I know there were some uh, some maybe questions of how just how powerful a, a singular triton is. You, now you're, you're seeing it, uh, a triton's combat effectiveness. To the top with Mia. Oh, well, I'm feeling just as good as I was before I got that last hit. Let's see. Metal man on me. Hammer time. Dun, 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 ch -ch dun, dun, ch chuck my hammer. So he's like, he's melee. You're within melee. Okay, then him, I so. just melee him. So that sucks because I get less damage. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Fine. Okay, it's 30 to hit. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> does that mean I roll the 20? It does. I think so. I well, your modifier is plus 10, right? Yeah. Okay, so I roll a crit. Nice. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, fine. We are I take all back my complaint. <laughs> <laughs> so then I just add what I. Wait, sorry. So then the damage I would do is. I'm not used to melee, sorry. Just 1d8 plus 6? Yeah. So then my damage would be 14 plus. Um, does it do another plus 6 or no? Because that's. No, no, okay, no. So just modifier once. 18 damage. Nicely done. I get two D8s just to throw a hammer. Dang. This is why I don't melee, guys. Shikara, where you at? And then, um, I guess I will take up a take a few steps back so that next time I could chuck my hammer, maybe. You can again. You'll provoke an attack by oh, opportunity, but you are. I keep forgetting entirely that. Entirely free to do so. I do keep forgetting that. It's fine. Just leave it. Soldiers, Shaft, actually, you see at the top of the stairs now, like far, like up almost two full flights now, you can see where the door to the anchor room is. You see Alstoff, he's come out to, to look down at what is going on. And he sees you, of course. What? I know you! And you see on his gauntlet, he manipulates again and he pushes a few... Buttons. Oh. Another dragon. And the two toy soldiers that you can see, Shaft, they sit, stand, immediately stand completely upright, like at ease almost, or, or at arms, whatever the, whatever the one, whatever one applies. <laughs> and the, the light in their head, it goes, it goes back to white for a second, and then it turns red again, and they both turn to you, ignoring Dreg, as it's clear Alsov has some type of control over them. And the two of them 
move upon you and they get up to you for two attacks each. Hmm. So, uh, 17 on the first one. Uh, use um, my reaction, Defensive Duelist. That gives me an AC of 20. Okay, great. Uh, the second one is a 19. So that one hits for 11 slashing. Oh, shit. Second toy soldier, uh, ooh, definitely that's a miss. And then the second is a, another 19. Wow, for max damage of 13 slashing. Uh, okay. How are you looking? <laughs> or, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Max damage of 15 slashing. All right. In the in the level with the library and the Ape, Ape Zarin, uh first soldier towards Mia. Wow, will definitely miss both of it. Its weapons just Cheek. clinking off of your armor. The ape, though, the fleshy large target. Uh, well, with a 24 and a 10. 10 misses. So one hit then is going to be seven bludgeoning. Last toy soldier uh, with a modified 20 and a 16. Those both hit. Total of 21 piercing. What's your movement speed as a ape? 40. Shaft, you're up. Scoop us all up. I want to ask a question. A couple things. First off, the staircases, are they open on each side that go down to the floor? Yeah, basically, as soon as you're, like, five feet down, it's just a railing. And then you can see the open level around it. So you could easily hop over the railing. Especially where you are, like, midpoint of the stairs, there's ample room to try to vault over the railing down to the floor. If I was to run at one of these things and knock it off, falling myself... Would that uh, be my movement, or is that actually going to be considered my action? So I would count that as a uh, grapple attempt, which will still... So the grapple is like a special attack. So it actually only replaces one of your two attacks when you take the attack action. So if you were to attempt that, it would... Yes, it would also constitute part of your movement, and this push or grapple attempt, which would just be a contested strength... You would fall, resolve the fall, and then you would still be able to attack. So here's my plan. I'm going to dive at one of these things, grasping around its neck, taking it over with me, and then I'm going to use my shackles to teleport up to Mia. Oh. So if you, so the, the teleport only, you teleport to the shackle wearer. Yeah. Oh. I can I teleport it to you. That's right. That's backwards. Okay. I am going to drink my potion of greater healing. Okay. I haven't had any potion since Campbell, man. All right, that gives me 14 back. And I am going to, since I'm still under the effects of Zephyr Strike, I get an additional 30 feet of movement. So I will take my whole 55 feet and haul ass down the stairs as fast as I can go. Okay. And you still do not provoke attacks opportunity. I should have made you roll the con, but I forgot. I even have a note here, too. God damn it. Okay, so you're... You want me, you want me you, do I roll it now? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. You're... Okay. Well, okay. I'll let you... No, I forgot. That's I forgot. That's my bad. Although I'll definitely remember now. <laughs> <laughs> Famous So you're 55 words. feet away from them now, then. Yes. Okay, that puts you down... Like a full, you can move like a full story and a half basically on on these stairs. So you are now on the, I guess that would be what be the third level, right? To the bottom of the third level, while the fight above you is still on the fourth, and uh, toy soldiers on the stairs. Okay. And I can, I, can I still see Tenderman from where I'm at? Uh, e- no, I'm gonna say no. Okay. Okay. Shoot. Baldrin. <sighs> All right, I'm just going to carry on smashing through these metal foes. Uh, another 11. Oh, that's better. 23. Yes, definitely. 23. Easily enough. Again, your mighty ape fist just battering one of these soldiers apart into pieces. Its limbs fly off, gears rolling across the floor. 
your knuckles starting to shred as the pieces of metal contort and, and crush beneath your might, but you have downed one of these toy soldiers. Okay, so around me now, what have we got? There are only two of these soldiers left in melee range with you and you alone, as you've destroyed the one that was directly adjacent to Mia. Okay, I'm just going to hold where I am then. All right. Slava, repositioning himself to get next to one of these soldiers, lays in with his trident, hitting. I mean, he's striking true, but he's not doing much damage. Although that was a pretty good roll, so he does 10 piercing. First hit, that one is taken. Mia, with you. So I look around, there's two in here with me? Yep. And I don't know what's outside, like where Shaft is. You've seen, you saw the two uh, attack Drag and then retreat away from him and continue down the stairs. So they are out of sight from where you are. So there's, there are four left. Correct. You easily could get to the top of the stairs to meet up with Drag, as he's only about 15 feet away from you, to look what's down there. Um, you would also then still technically be in range to throw your hammer at both potential groups of metal men. Ape Zarin's got this. Ape, Ape Zarin's, Zarin's got, got this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I would run to the to the stairs, look down, see him going after Shaft, see that the ape's been destroying like crazy, and um, chuck my hammer, and I think I would cast a spiritual hammer to chase him. I will say before, so as you move uh, next to Dreg, you also do see Alstoff at the top, to, up to at the fifth level. So you see him too at the at the top of the stairs. And again, a look of surprise as he sees yet another person. He, and he just, he screeches at you. I was told not to be disturbed. How did you get in here? Could I potentially cast my spiritual weapon up there, but like any damage I'm doing is like non-lethal damage? I don't believe with a spell you're allowed to do non-lethal. Mm, let me think. Yeah, okay. I'll allow it. Well, I just really think the bargaining chip idea is kind of cool. I don't know. No, I, I certainly, I certainly agree. Uh, although your spiritual hammer, your spiritual hammer does force damage. If it did like bludging, piercing, or, or I would allow it, but actually, I'm, I'm gonna. Okay, that's that. fine. So at this point, I will chuck my hammer at the, at whatever metal man is like in front, closest to shaft, and then I will cast a spiritual weapon. And that spiritual weapon is like a 60 foot range. So like, could I get it up on one of those guys? Oh yeah, like the ones on the stairs now, or they're they're 15 feet from you. And you see Shaft no longer next to him. He's far down at the bottom. Okay. You can even barely see him as the stairs. They're not quite in line. You know, it's not like this huge five story staircase all the way up. Mm -hmm. There certainly is this turn in the landing that now Shaft is at. So it's an 18 to hit with my. Um, Falling Star Hammer. So that's... Um, Sorry, this was one next to Falzerin or on the stairs? Stairs. I'm going for all stairs. I'm not bothering with Falzerin. So that's 24 damage with my Ooh. Falling Star. And your hammer punches through the chest of one of these soldiers on the stairs. Very clearly the same one that Shaft had been laying into as it had already been damaged. And again, much like the dragon shrapnel of it had been shorn off from bladed weapons and there's one left on the stairs okay so since i saw it destroy the one so easily i think i'm gonna hold off on casting this spell then okay if that's okay and i'll just hang out with drag i guess and uh assume i can get him next when the hammer's coming back back to me speaking of drag taking a cue from you he sees he kind of looks back at ape Zarin assuming that he can handle himself. And we'll turn to the toy soldier on the stairs, casting magic missile. Again, really, other than fireball, is the only offensive thing that he has. But he will cast it as a second level, so four darts. Auto hit, baby. Ooh, very good roll. Near max, 18 force damage. And I think he's fine at the top of the stairs for sure. Mia and, and Drag now see Alstoff type, you know, it, manipulate the, this little kind of gauntlet control thing that he has. And the toy soldier on the stairs, it turns 
away from descending and moves back up to Mia for two strikes. One with a 21 and only a 14. 21 hit. For 12 piercing. Mm. Ape Zarin, still just they're focusing on you. They're not even paying attention to Slava despite him damaging one of them. A 19 and a 15. They both hit. 20 bludgeoning. Second toy soldier. Oh my god, both strikes critical fails. Ooh. <laughs> Laying into his pal directly next to him. There's been a lot of criticals this battle. For 24 bludgeoning. Dang. Yikes. Just tearing Ooh. that one down. Uh, both still on their feet, however. Shaft. Okay, so do I see the... I, just, I got down to the bottom. I turned around and looked. I see Mia took one of them out, and then the other one sort of stops and heads back up the stairs. It has right? retreated now, yeah. So with your 55 movement, it is now uh, 70 feet away from you. All right, so if I move 55 back up to where I was... I, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to do a... I'm run up there, 55. I'm going to look up, and I, do I see Al stop at that point? Yes, you're back to where you can easily see him now. All right, I'm going to put a couple of arrows in Alstoff. How dare you? <laughs> it's a crit, but I, I'm reluctant <laughs> to say so. <laughs> because it seems too crazy that this crap's going on. <laughs> it's <is> ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. So that, let me see here. That's would be a 29 to hit. Okay, so let me do, that's 8. And he has not taken any damage yet. And <laughs> Definitely I don't not. have Hunter's Mark on him, so not all that great then. So that is going to be 13 points of damage. Uh, oh, sorry, that's 8 plus 13. So whatever that is, 20. <laughs> 21. Wow, okay. And then second. Okay, that's going to be a 20 to hit, not natural. <laughs> and now he does get Colossus Slayer on him. Dang. So that's... 14 additional points of damage. Oh my goodness. Your two arrows into this little gnome tinkerer. He immediately slumps to the ground. Uh, I didn't think he'd go down that fast. <laughs> Whoops. Ape Zarn. I'm going to continue on with this rampage. <laughs> okay. First. <laughs> Is it a crit? You gotta be, gotta Is it be a crit? kidding me. Are yes. you serious? Oh my god! This is ridiculous. You're, hey, get, look at this. No Emily. We're all rolling it's great. It's true. She's cursed. Oh my. She's cursed. She's the secret sauce to the bad rolling. Okay, so. We're down, but we're not what out. What is this again? So, so it's 36, 36 plus 3d10. Dang. Kill him. Well, it's a good thing I critted because I did 8 damage. Oh, what? So 36 plus 8. Wait, time out. Right. 3d10, 8? Yeah, I rolled a 0, a 4, and a 4. A 0 is a 10. A 0 is a 10. Well, a zero's a ten. Righto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Four. So, uh, so 18. <laughs> that was a delayed response. <laughs> well, even, <laughs> even if it was a 0, that is more than enough to destroy either of the two yeah. soldiers that you would target with this first attack. Again, just into pieces of shrapnel. It's your boy. Ape Zarin is just on a rampage. Next. Next. Wow. 19. Uh, Definitely. Plus 9. Yeah, so 28. <laughs> You're so not used to this. He's going to play a barbarian next time. <laughs> uh, 29. Damage for that one. 29 bludgeoning. And the last soldier next to you is just obliterated. <laughs> My goodness, the ape is ridiculous. You have your movement still. There are no enemies adjacent to you now. You see Mia and Dreg contending with the last toy soldier mm -hmm. at the base or top, depending on the direction you're moving, of the stairs. Yeah, so I will uh, use up as much of my movement as I can or as much as it takes to get there. 15 feet away. Easy, easy, okay. easy. And now you, Ape C, shaft to your left. Alstoff to the right. Here you are, <laughs> stuck in the middle with them. 
Slava will will move move up with you to the last toy soldier. Just trident, true trident here. With a natural twenty. Are you kidding me? Can't be serious. What? This is so absurd. Am I the only one that hasn't rolled a crit, or did I? Or did I roll? Did I roll? I don't know. Look, you've been max damaging with that yeah, lightning strike twice okay. yeah. on the dragon. Fine. Okay? Oh, but he rolls a one on his D8, so he gets a 12 slashing. Not quite enough to take it down, but it's looking really, really bad. Mia, to the top with you. So there's one soldier left. One left. It's look like one of its arm, like the joint in its left arm is no longer functioning. It's barely holding Dragon. up the weapon attached to its right. And what's happening with Alstoff? Reminder. Alstoff is on the ground, having taken two arrows from Shaft. On the ground. Like His condition is unknown. Unknown condition. Hmm. He's unmoving. It's hammer time. Chuck my hammer. Let's let's rip that uh that let's let's make him not worry about that arm anymore. Seventeen. Uh, that is a hit. And with a hammer chuck of t- what? 32, 32 damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Your hammer again punching through its abdomen, just exploding. It and the shrapnel. If I was a meaner DM, I would take everyone next to it. Uh, I would give them. I would make them make a deck save. Shrapnel damage. Avoid shrapnel damage. But the fight is over. We can drop out of initiative. Holy! Wow. Fuck. 2020, wow. baby. Damn. 2020. Wonderful job, everybody. This is, Good job. This is coming out. This is the way to end 2020 with all the 20s. You know. My God. So I'm gonna Falzern's gonna remain in ape form. I'd like to run over to uh, Tinnerman where he's in a slump on the ground and inspect him to see, you know, what what his status is. You see that his chest is still rising and falling with very, very shallow breaths. It's clear that he's making death saving throws. Could I uh, try to stabilize him? Uh, Mia walks up. She she spares the dying. <laughs> and Tinnerman is no longer dying as he is spared. And I'm going to reach down and um, grab both of his uh, forearms and try and lift him up <laughs> and pull left and right on his Why? arms. Why? Uh, roll me an attack. What? So I don't intend to fatally wound him at all. This is like an intimidation. <laughs> Oh, what? so so like spare the dying doesn't wake him up. He doesn't he's ha- still no, oh, he's he doesn't have any hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch Armstrong him. <laughs> Rip him limb from You limb. tear him in half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's walk that back. <laughs> Rewind. That's an outtake. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'd like him to be awake for this. So I'll I'll. Uh, what do I have to do to wake him up? Medicine? You yeah. you got to feed him a health potion or he wakes up in 1d4 hours. Which, of course, oh. you have no way of knowing. Gotcha. I don't think I have a health potion. I don't. I did. <laughs> I needed it. <laughs> Does uh, So I'll... Yeah, we did. Can I speak as nope. an ape? No. <laughs> you can barely comprehend. Quite frankly. Can everybody make me a perception check, please? Yes, sir. Eleven. Uh. Oh wait, I rolled a one. I'm halfling. I can re-roll that. Yeah, you can. Uh, Eleven for Ape Zarin. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Much Anybody better. Anybody that got a, a ten or higher. That's me. In the sudden stillness after this battle, Ape Zarin clambering up the stairs, Mia next to him, stabilizing Alstoff. You can hear even from these. Four, four flights up, the soft pound, 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 <gasps> pound of somebody at the front door of the Knowledge Center. And with that, let's go back to Emily. Oh, Hot I was dog. hoping it would be Grimby trapped in a closet. I just wanted to pull his limbs. What now, Shakara? I would like to run to the Knowledge Center. And I realize that Grimby might not be there, but I still need to check. All right. Prioritizing the captain, then. For once. 
for once. As you're moving through the city, you see in the city, like, before, like, basically the last time you're here, which would have been, like, when you uh, had first come back with Grimby, you know, and, and saw the the Tinnerman's soldiers moving about the city, and it was looked like it was in complete lockdown. Now, though, it's like the first day you arrive. There are people in the streets. There's very clearly activity everywhere. As, of course, it is, like, mid day mid to, to you know mid afternoon beautiful gorgeous sun in the sky that storm that continuous storm long gone since the kraken's defeat and yeah there's just the citizens are, are back out it's almost as if things have gotten back to some semblance of normalcy and you kind of overhear as you're moving through through the city that a lot of people are talking about you know, Alamar and, and obviously word of the new elders have, has very quickly spread across the city. And you come upon the Knowledge Center and you actually spot Salardo. Sar- Sardos in Alamar's body. Alardo, is that what we're calling him? He's got many names. He goes by many names. <laughs> <laughs> but you see him... You know, a, a few hundred feet from the Knowledge Center, so you're not quite to the to the front doors, but he has a crowd gathered, and he's speaking to to uh, about maybe a dozen, a dozen and a half uh, Heracleonians as you come upon them. What would you like to do? You want to keep going by, or are you interested at all, or what's going? On? I'll slow down and try and and listen for a minute, to hear, just to hear what he's saying. You see, Sardo has, has adopted again kind of that that hunched form he's still of course caneless right he had nothing but amidst the people it seems that he's still maintaining some type of show right that he was in in the keep and you just hear him speaking to the crowd the city is not quite safe there are still intruders and you know as people First, uh, you know, it's been a kind of a sense of, of, of jovialness, you know, that joyousness. People finally starting to feel good about their safety in the city itself, you know, maybe the rule as well. And the, the gathered crowd, they kind of, uh, a hushed gasp is maybe too strong of a word, but obviously many of them are taken aback. Kind of this instant sense of, of, of fearfulness, perhaps. And you see Sardo still, of course, maintaining this this hunched form. Kind of, again, you see him close his eyes and that same, like, sense that he he put on when he was in the keep, you know, when, he has, you, kinda, when you were inquiring about how he feels, where Falzer and Shaft have gone. Kind of pinpointing, again, as he, his head almost imperceptibly shifts to the left to directly now his gaze fixed on the knowledge center enemies abound who will take arms with me and defeat them and people in the crowd they're 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 calling to him. what what do you mean who's back is is the army uh, are they have, they have they come ashore again just questions being flung at him and he pauses, Sardo pauses. Unknown to me, perhaps, agents left behind. To the Knowledge Center, we must go. He kind of motions to, to the nearest wizard in this crowd to take his arm, and they oblige as the, the crowd begins to move towards the Knowledge Center in the direction you are traveling. Can I get there before them? Yes, uh, you could certainly try to outpace them. And it's obviously going to be very clear that you're moving at kind of this hurried pace. But again, Sardo is maintaining this this decrepitness that was witnessed by the crowd gathered in the keep as he and Isabella were addressing them. So they're certainly moving much more slowly than they normally would be. So you can quickly get, get past them. And, and as you do, you do see Sardo kind of regard you with, with this glare, almost. Uh, but he doesn't say anything to you and doesn't draw attention to you or anything like that. 
Okay, yeah, I'm just going to try and hurry it up and get to the Knowledge Center way as much before them as I can. And again, you're, you're only a couple hundred feet away, so from both your perspective and the crowd's perspective, the Knowledge Center is clearly within sight. And why don't you roll me a perception check? I apparently am quite concentrating on my footsteps because that is a five. Okay. So from your path, you can clearly see, I mean, yes, the Knowledge Center, it's five stories tall. At the very peak, of course, that solarium where you and the and the rest of the party has been a couple of times, right? To, to you know, defend the anchor point uh, where you went to, to use the spy glasses to inspect the bombarding ships upon the island only a night ago? Was it last night? I, geez, I've lost track at this point. Not too long ago, regardless of when it actually occurred. But there's very clearly activity up there. From this distance, it is difficult to make out exactly what's going on, but there are clearly people in the solarium, which I suppose wouldn't strike you as being strange, because when you left the anchor, it is manned by, you know, five ritual casters to keep the safety shell going. But of course, the safety shell is no longer inactive. And you do know that somehow the anchors have been modified by Tinnerman to serve a different purpose. And as you get closer, nearly, you know, 50 feet or so from, from the front door, the crowd about as far behind you, you're quickly outpacing them above the knowledge center into the sky this clear blue sky like this is the nicest day since you've arrived in heraklion right this giant dark black cloud forms and it's familiar it looks to be mia's doing juxtaposed against it, you can just make out this faint outline. You see a mechanical dragon in the air. Its scales, you know, made up of metal, overlapping metal. Its wings, the only thing on it that don't appear to be made of metal. This flapping fabric, like this stretched leather looks very oily and kind of almost gives you reflections against lightning cracks that are lancing down at it. Now that your attention is drawn here, you see far up, you see Dreg as if he's levitating. He's he's in midair, prone, just seated there. And Shaft is hanging onto a rope, hanging down from the very top of the solarium as this dragon looms down upon Dreg. And the two of them get up, and Dreg makes his way back up to the rope to this window that you can just make out falls her in, almost like leaning over, hand grasping out for Dreg as the dragon swoops in. And from this distance, it's hard to make out any real details, but from where its mouth would be on a, on a, on a you know, a biological dragon, this brilliant light lances out into the window hitting shaft and drag now about to climb in and anything that would be in its path inside what do you want to do oh i would watch that for a second so my thinking is they just left me so i'm hurt but i also need them i need their help to go get the gauntlets so, I, I guess I gotta go save them. And I would know that Alamar was speaking of them when he said intruders. Don't I think it's, it's quite clear, yes. It's Al- 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 Allardos. Allardos. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would try and stay ahead of the pack, and I would try and, and run for the doors to try and go upstairs to join the fight. Okay. And as you press upon them, they do not open. It appears they are barred from the inside. Do I know of another way inside? I don't think that you do. No, this is the only entrance that you've used into the knowledge center. And Alamar's Allardo's crowd is quickly catching up with you. Quick! Is there another way in? These doors are locked. 
you see Al Allardo. I'm just going, going to call him Sardo. You see Sardo. He points up to the fight that is happening. You see, they have arrived. Our forces defend the Knowledge Center. We must aid them. A few uh, members of the crowd, they run up to, to next to you, right? Uh, as again, Alamar still hasn't made any type of indication towards you. Is almost as if he's, to the crowd at least, he's barely acknowledged it. And one of them, you know, running up to you, hearing your cry. Well, there is, there is a back door. Uh, perhaps it is open as he himself is trying to push upon it and open the knowledge center. Show me, move, let's go. And he will, he will take you and just very quickly as, I mean, the knowledge center, yes, it is a vast building, but uh, I suppose it would probably amount to two or three rounds of combat though for the listener who is keeping track of the timeline between <laughs> the separation of the party. And you get to uh, a smaller door. It's a single door, as the, the door to the Knowledge Center is it would, it's a double door, right? And again, the two of you pressing upon it, it seems that it is locked from the inside. What kind of door is it? What's it made out of? A wooden. It looks like it's a wooden door. I will try and bash it down with my shoulder, I suppose. Uh, okay, you know what? This, this guy will help you. Uh, so he's going to aid you. So you're going to have advantage on your your shoulder check into this door. So make me uh make me a strength. You can use athletics if you're trained. I am. That's a 14 total with advantage. Okay, as your shoulder hits it, it's not quite enough. It rattles in its hinges, but very clearly this tube, there's a bar across the back of this door. But you will take only one point of bludgeoning as you ram yourself into it. Okay. Can I try again? Absolutely. Ram it into it one time. Together! Let's hit it! Okay, this guy is running with you, charging into it with his own little wizard shoulder. That's a 20 total. Oh, that is much better. As you both lay into it, you hear this clear splinter of wood as, as the door starts to concave against your might is not quite open but you can now clearly see it is loose in its hinges and uh, weakened for sure one more time we almost got it this is quite painful <laughs> that's a 21 okay yes again this second round is enough to splinter the door in you see the the you know the two pieces of the bar that was set across it. You've managed to completely break this door is now no longer functional, as you've gone into the very back of the knowledge center. Why don't you make me another perception check? Seven. I'm I'm rubbing my arm. Yes, that hurt of course. Breaking down that door. So on the first floor here, you see that the entire knowledge center is just darkness, right? Obviously, with your abilities granted from your pairing what, what did we call it your your agreement with isabella and the powers <laughs> bestowed upon you you can see in here just fine uh but the human he is a human a wizard with you uh certainly is completely in the dark but there's no lights in here which is of course very different from every time you showed up to the knowledge center as it always seems that it's been open to the public at nearly any time of day <laughs> As you've, 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 you know, the few times that you've been here, you've been arriving at all kinds of different hours. But it's completely dark in here and, and completely silent from the first floor. You go bring the others around this way and get some lights. Of, of course, yes. Be careful, please. Yes. And I will draw my sword and start walking into the room and trying to be alert for anything. And you continue, and you can, you know, through the stacks as... The, it's not like it's a maze in here, right? Like, it's very easy for you to navigate to, like, the front desk where, you know, the, the main lobby, you could say, with where there are the, the tables set up for people to retrieve books and read and sit down. 
uh, some of the comfy chairs in which you've taken a seat yourself. I think you actually took a nap in here one time, <laughs> if I recall correctly. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but you make it to that lobby where, like the you know where the front desk was. Like every time you've been in here, you've seen Janella manning it. Of course, you know she is not here. But the front door is being pounded upon, right? And and its own bar starting to to warp and bend against the force from the outside. And now, in this main open lobby, you can hear echoes from the floors above very faintly. But you hear shafts, yells, and cries, and the twang of a bow. And yet you hear the shrill voice of Alstoff Tinnerman screaming something about not wanting to be disturbed. How did you get in here? And behind you, the door finally breaks in from the crowd outside. I will take one look at the front door and see who's there. You see, yeah, a few a few of the, you know, uh, the, the man that was helping Sardo in his, you know, decrepit performance. He's right at the forefront. Uh, a couple people behind him, of course, Sardo himself, still a hand on someone's arm, still playing this role as they begin to file in to the knowledge center. You see, like, the people that, at the front, you know, again, like you, rubbing their shoulder, and they're like, oh, someone's in here. And they, of course, immediately recognize you from being uh, outside at the front and have, you know, coming around the building. So it's not like they move to attack you or anything like that, but clearly surprised that you're already here, and now you can certainly act. I will point up and then run upstairs. And you hear Sardo as you know, behind you as you sprint up. Destroy anything in here that moves. That's it. End of the show. Thanks for listening. But before you go, I got a couple of things I want to tell you about. Uh, you can find the Encourageable Party all over the interwebs. You can just go to encourageableparty.com and you can find all the links there. While you're there, check out the Patreon. There's some really cool stuff you could do with the Patreon. Like give inspiration to Shaft. Or you can waste it and give it to one of those other mooks. Even worse, you could give it to Leland. Also, you can get access to mini campaigns and other cool stuff that we do. You're automatically entered into all contests. I mean, it's, it's really a great deal. Uh, the Encourageable Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. All ambient sounds and music provided by TabletopAudio.com. Intro and outro music is by Josh Jarvis, and you can email him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com if you need any music stuff. Okay, that's it. Now you can go. Happy adventuring!